So what is one of the undoubtedly coolest professions ever? And for that profession, why do they have to wear, typically they all end up wearing diapers, adult diapers, and they also have a higher risk of cataracts. So stick around to the end of this video and you're gonna learn about the answer to that question. Hey guys, I'm Brian Nett from HowRadiologyWorks.com. We have bite-sized videos for those in the radiology field, especially technologists. If that sounds good, click on subscribe below and then click on the little bell icon so you can get notified when we release new content. And specifically today, we're talking about cataracts induction, especially from radiation. So we'll first define what cataracts is and why it happens that if you have relatively high levels of radiation, that you have a higher rate of developing cataracts. So we're going to jump into that now. So this is the anatomy of the eye. And in general, you know that the light comes in here. The light is projected onto the back of the eye. And then the signal passes through the optic nerve and is interpreted by the brain. But we're actually not going to talk at all about that image formation or how your brain in interprets that. What we're going to talk about rather is just the lens itself. So this lens itself is actually where the light is passing through this lens. So if there's anything that is opaque inside of that lens, it's going to cause a problem and increase the difficulty in the vision system. So that definition is just a cataracts is anything that's opaque within the lens itself. And then we can also just define a couple terms is that the cortex is the outside of the lens here. And then anterior is where the light's coming in and then posterior is behind. So those are the terms. And then that cataracts, it's anything that's opaque with inside the lens. And the reason that cataracts happen is that the lens itself does not have a means to communicate with the liquid around it. So there's no mechanism for clearing waste within the lens itself. So if the cells die within the lens itself, there's no mechanism for those to be cleared. And that's the mechanism behind cataracts generation. Then as far as a classification system, typically over time, the cataracts becomes worse. And they're typically rated on this system from one to four this scaling system. So if we look at the one, it'll be a little bit of a cataracts forming posteriorly. And then level two, you'll start to have some anterior formation of opaque regions within the eye. And then three, these regions get much larger. And then four is the most severe cataracts where you have very significant coverage both of anterior and posterior. And then cataracts generation. We talked about in another video stochastic deterministic effects for radiation. And cataracts is an example of a deterministic effect. So if you remember from that video on stochastic versus deterministic effects, we remember that there's a lower dose below which a deterministic effect will not have any impact. So if the dose is very low, the deterministic effect will not kick in essentially. So for instance, if you have a very low radiation dose, you will not experience cataracts. So there's a lower dose limit where cataracts will not be induced. There will, there's not a probability of it being induced. And the data that we have primarily is from radiation therapy patients where a relatively high radiation dose is used typically in an external beam to treat, for instance, a brain cancer. And there's different studies which have been done which look at treatment length. And then for this lower threshold, there's actually 
some degree of difference in where this lower threshold occurs. And that's a function of the way in which the radiation dose is fractionated, for instance. If the treatment's given in just one dose, then the lowest dose that would cause a cataract and the highest dose where you do not see a cataract is too gray. So if you're giving just one dose of radiation, once you get to too gray, that's the time at which you're going to see cataracts develop. If you're giving the treatment over many different fractions in a period that's three weeks to three months, then the lowest dose that could cause cataracts there would be four gray. But in some people, you could get up to 10 gray without causing a cataract. And then if you're doing even a longer fractionated treatment, if you're doing a longer fractionated treatment over three months, it takes five and a half gray to see the first cataracts. That's the lowest dose at which cataracts occurs. And you could go up to 10 and a half gray before all the patients would have a cataract. So you can see this is one of the motivations why you would want to do fractionation because you can deposit a significantly higher radiation dose. You could deposit three or four gray, for instance, without inducing any cataracts in the case that you do fractionation. Whereas if you did a single dose and you had three or four gray, the patients would have cataracts induction. So that's what this table here is summarizing the lower thresholds for this deterministic effect. Also, cataracts has a latency period. So these deterministic curves where we plot from no impact to having some impact, in this case, the impact isn't really the severity that we're talking about, but the latency or the amount of time before which that cataracts will be induced. So if the radiation dose is within two and a half to six gray, we're looking at eight years before that cataracts will form on average. There is some variation in that. And if it's six and a half to 11 and a half gray, we're looking at only four years or half as much time for that cataract to be developed. So for this case, this deterministic behavior, the increase in severity here is actually the reduced latency. So then just one more thing, that little teaser at the beginning is that because astronauts are experiencing significantly higher radiation doses than people that live underneath this atmosphere that helps protect us from a lot of the uh, radiation, the astronauts have experienced doses from, for instance, heavy ions. And this has led to early cataracts in uh, many astronauts. And one thing to note is that the RBE, and if you don't know what RBE is, we have another video about RBE, so check that video out. But the RBE for neutrons and for heavy ions is between 10 and 50. So RBE, again, is the relative biologic effect. So this is saying that for neutrons and heavy ions, they're about 10 to 50 times, will cause 10 to 50 times more damage than x-rays given the same radiation dose. And that effect is, is higher at lower radiation doses here. So what I presented so far is kind of like the classical view for cataracts induction. And I wanted to also talk about the fact that the ICRP has changed the guidelines relatively recently from what was considered to be the level for deterministic cataracts induction. It went from five sieverts to 0 0.5 sieverts. And then the level of workplace exposure for a year 
with respect to this went from 150 millisieverts to 20 millisieverts. And like with pretty much everything in radiation biology, there is not uniform agreement within the field that this was the right thing to do. On our website, we have a link to a paper in health physics, which kind of looks at some of the methodology used and still questions whether or not that's the lowest, do whether that's the correct level for the dose, for the deterministic threshold. And there's even people using epidemiological studies that are questioning whether or not there's a threshold at all. So just like with anything, we want to do as low as re reasonably achievable with respect to our radiation doses so that we can make sure and, and do the best thing for the patient. But in general, the kind of classical view of cataracts induction is that it is a deterministic effect and that it has a threshold and that threshold we can debate whether or not it's 5 sieverts or 0 0.5 sieverts or somewhere in between on average. Looking around to the end, guys. Now you know the answer to the question I posed at the beginning was astronauts, right? Because they're going to have a higher radiation risk due to the cosmic rays and to the neutrons that they're exposed to. And also that they're going to be more likely to have to wear diapers because of the lack of gravity up there to contain our, uh, our urine. <laughs> so stick around. And also we appreciate if you check out our next video, which is on radiation pathways, radiation damage pathways.